care specialist in dealing with patients with Parkinson's is mainly one of support. It's also important to educate and education is not just of the patient, it's of the carers, be they family, education of the staff and people caring for it and linking and coordinating and linking with everybody that's involved in their health care. The Parkinson's nurse plays a key role for somebody with a chronic debilitating condition whose condition is going to get worse over time. People's condition varies from patient to patient and the rate of progression is very variable. It is not possible to predict it for, for people how what symptoms they will get, at what rate they will get worse. So it's important that they have a support person that they can contact, ask are these symptoms related to their Parkinson's. It is so different from person to person that very often in a single G practice, P, GP practice there will not be many patients with Parkinson's and even if a GP does have five or six patients with Parkinson's, each patient will be individually very different and managed very differently. It's a difficult condition to support without someone like a nurse who has time to give to the person because managing Parkinson's well is about managing the quality of life well. It's using medications to do that and the quality of life is obviously varies between person to person. For the young person it's keeping them at work. For the older person it's encouraging them perhaps not to retire too soon. And for the person needing later stage care it's supporting the carer to give that quality of care. The success in Parkinson's nursing is when the patient with Parkinson's doesn't come to hospital because of their Parkinson's unless for a specific treatment. This is keeping patients out of hospital. It's important to link with all the other therapists involved to do this. It can't be done alone. It's the, the neurologist prescribing the medications and the Parkinson's nurse monitoring the effect and the benefits and the side effects of those medications. Educating the person as to what to expect means that they can alert the team early with regard to it. For example, the Parkinson's nurse will educate the patient with regard to side effects of medication. Some of these may not be well known, such as gambling, hypersexuality. But if these are identified early and the family understands it and the person understands it, they can be dealt with more appropriately. Other side effects may be thought to be the condition, such as dyskinesia, uncontrolled movement, may be thought to be tremor. So it's important that all healthcare professionals dealing with the person realises which are benefit, effects of medication and which are effects of the condition itself. The Parkinson's nurse links very closely with the nurses in the community on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, if the person needs respite care, the Parkinson's nurse may be becoming more aware early that the patient's family is, is tiring and will not be able to continue caring in the long term. Often family are reluctant to start this and the Parkinson's nurse can play a big role in encouraging patients to take this up. The role of the Parkinson's nurse also extends into the hospital, meaning that the Parkinson's patient gets the optimum treatment at the optimum time in the hospital. Medications for Parkinson's patients are important and unlike most other medications, it can be critical to the person's safety, swallowing safety, physical safety, whether they get the medication at the exact time that they require it rather than the ward round time. It's very difficult for people to understand the critical difference this makes and it's important that the nurse is present on the ward or phoning the hospital. As a Parkinson's nurse based in a single hospital here, I would often phone hospitals when I know the patient is admitted to another hospital to warn the staff of how important it is. This patient might be totally self-caring if they get their medications on time. If the nurses fail to manage to do this, it may mean total care by the nursing staff. So obviously a big time saver for staff once they understand. And also a saving the stress and discomfort for the patient because it is very uncomfortable to be without your medications if you've got Parkinson's. It is an absolutely awful feeling of being pulled down, of unable to move and unsafe. Typically when a person is given a diagnosis by Parkinson's, they receive it in the neurology clinic. 
sometimes they may have had this diagnosis from their GP and they may even be on Parkinson's medications. In the ideal situation, it would be preferable that the neurologist gets the opportunity to examine them off medications. That is, they haven't been given medications for Parkinson's and they get it examined early off medications. This means that we tend to give an appointment for a new diagnosis for Parkinson's very soon. So they tend to get them within six to eight weeks. On the day of diagnosis, once the neurologist has made the diagnosis, I would like to be involved closely and support that person. The level of support and the amount of information I give them will vary entirely on the patient, from patient to patient. Some people like to know very little on the first day. However, I would always insist that I meet them within six weeks. Some people will say, I'll call you and I'll meet them within a week. Others, I will insist that I'll have seen them again within six weeks because sometimes they're trying to ignore this diagnosis and they're actually struggling alone. I typically give them information about websites that they should contact, such as the Irish Parkinson's Association, the UK Parkinson's Organization, the European Parkinson's Association, and we move. Because many people just Google Parkinson's and get a variety of very, very frightening information. Patients are very interested in how fast they'll progress. They will have asked the doctor this. They'll always come out and ask me again. And I tend to tell them the best rule of thumb is their own rate of progression, not to judge by their neighbor who has Parkinson's or anybody they see in the clinic. I try to focus on healthy exercise, keeping a good physical regime going, not changing taking early retirement, not changing anything dramatically, not moving house suddenly, not getting a bathroom in downstairs and planning for a disability. I reassure them they will not be in a wheelchair within months. This is not Parkinson's. I also reassure them that if their Parkinson's gets worse rapidly, it is likely to be related to an infection, to constipation. And they're very surprised that my first visit, my focus is on preventing constipation now and in the future. In the future when they're on medicines, Often their medicines will not work effectively because their stomach is not emptying effectively if they're constipated. This will often result in hospitalization and a rapid deterioration in their Parkinson's symptoms. The, I encourage people to do Tai Chi exercises because it's good for balance and we don't have a medication that works well for balance. And this is something that they should learn if possible and it's very good for their balance. Driving, I encourage people to continue driving. Sometimes they see a diagnosis of Parkinson's they shouldn't drive. Um, but I warn them that they should get assessed, they should tell their insurers. Um, I also would reassure family, but if family are worried, I encourage them to get a, a driving assessment. Then usually take the person's own concerns. People can be very concerned about tremor. I try to encourage them not to focus on the tremor, especially if they're older, because the treatments for tremor can have a negative effect on their cognition. Also, the treatments for excess salivation can have a poor effect on their cognition. And they're best sometimes to manage it in other ways. The newly diagnosed person, I tend to send them away with some small information and my contact number, and I ask to see them within six weeks again if possible. If they're from a distance, maybe three months, or I'll see them at their next clinic visit if they're coming back for a test such as MRIs. When patients come into hospital, apart from getting their medicines on time, there are certain things that staff should be very aware of. I would consider every patient constipated even if they say they're not. The use of a Bristol stool chart is very effective. The patient is asked to point to a picture that best represents their most recent stool. And patients often say they're not constipated and their last stool can have been four days ago. It is vital that this is cleared, often clearing the constipation and getting their medicines on time and their hallucinations and other side effects settle down and their walking and movement improves. Very often patients are hallucinating and you're not aware of it unless you seek it. I would ask them, are, do they see small animals? Do they see small people? Are they frightened by the hallucinations? Often they're not frightened. Those who are frightened need further medical intervention and consideration by the medical staff because it is very distressing and they can, these hallucinations can be treated. Postural hypotension is another thing that can be monitored for in hospital very easily. The patient's blood pressure is checked on lying and again, after standing, three minutes after standing. They should have been lying for 20 minutes, ideally. If there's a drop, 
of more than 20 millimeters of mercury in the systolic pressure or more than 10 in the diastolic pressure, this patient may have postural hypotension, which may be contributing to falls, which could have led to his fractured hip that brought him into hospital. Without managing this postural hypotension, he will return again. It is possible to manage the postural hypotension quite easily. Nighttime sleep disturbance in Parkinson's can be due to undertreatment or overtreatment. It is important that someone like a Parkinson's nurse is asked to assess the patient or someone with the knowledge of Parkinson's because nighttime sedation may not be appropriate for these people. It is better that their Parkinson's is managed better and their sleep settles down.